Hi guys, this is the Audio Fool and for today, we're going to upgrade the shit Yggdrasil firmware. I'm still using an older version of the Yggdrasil and to be honest, I don't really have that itch to spend $650 plus shipping to have it upgraded to the Analog 2. But maybe I'll think about it when the Unison USB becomes available. But for now, SHIT has all of these Analog 1 boards and comes up with an idea to sell them as the Yggdrasil GS or Garage Sale version, which is essentially my old Iggy but with newer firmware. And they also offered the firmware upgrade for $35. I didn't really want to open up expensive gear but given my success with the Mimbi upgrade, I thought, hey, why not? So let's pry it open and do the upgrade. Before we start, as usual, don't be an idiot and always take your time. You can always send it to shit for them to do the upgrade. The tools needed, a screwdriver and a small flathead to gently pry up the firmware chip. If static electricity is an issue in your place, make sure to take the necessary precautions. We take the screws off the top, a total of 8 screws for some reason, and underneath the lip of the top chassis, remove another 7 screws. Now we need to disconnect a ribbon cable with very little leverage so it might be slightly difficult but just take your time to make sure nothing's damaged. Once separated, we can remove the top chassis from the top chassis. To remove the inner top chassis, we'll need to take off 6 screws at the bottom. Then we take out the screws from the inputs and outputs, so a total of 11 screws and a nut for the BNC connector, then we can simply slide out the inner chassis to reveal the board. Look for the ribbon cable which leads to the DSP board labeled Yggdrasil DSP board and look for the 8-pin firmware chip near the right side. Before removing the chip, make sure to note the orientation. There's a small notch at one end of the chip and this should be pointing towards the inputs. So remember this when putting the chip in. Slowly pry it out and take your time and you should get it out eventually. Align the new chip to the socket and gently insert. Again, the notch should be pointing towards the inputs and the Y should be pointing to the inputs as a result. That's it and not so difficult. To put it back together, just simply reverse the steps. Slide in the inner chassis on top of the bottom chassis and fit into the inputs. Screw in the screws, no need to go super tight. Carefully turn it over and screw in the 6 screws. Next, you need to slide in the top outer chassis and connect the ribbon. Make sure it's aligned and push it in. Once done, screw in the bottom screws and finally the top screws. Again, not so difficult, but you can always send it to shit to do the work for you. Is it worth it? For $35, I certainly enjoy taking apart the Iggy and seeing the innards and getting hands on. Have it play for a couple of hours as there was some distortion in the highs and mid mid lower treble, particularly in the Don't Know Why track by Nora Jones. And her vocals, the upper register sounds a little bit compressed and shrilly and distorted. I was afraid I did something wrong, but it relaxed eventually. In terms of changes, there are some very minor changes, most noticeably, the sounds seem to be slightly more forward and slightly more holographic. Bass is slightly flabbier but still good and still acceptable. On the other hand, it also seems to be slightly more expressive and a little bit more exciting. If I'll be honest though, I think I could do without it so perhaps the analog to upgrade would be the better way to go. 
but at least it makes my Iggy up to date and I can label it as the Iggy GS. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any comments or suggestions, just write them down below. See you in the next video.